It was dead of night. But at the bottom of Booster's garden, in the shed where he did his planning and inventing and making things, a light was shining. Booster was working late. He'd just finished making a scale model of a Myron space freighter, like the ones he'd often travelled in with his friend Bleep, the space boy. I wish I was on Myron with Bleep. It's ages since I've seen him, Booster was thinking, when suddenly he heard a familiar sound. It came from the old radio on Booster's workbench, and then he heard Bleep's voice through the static. Bleep calling Booster on Earth. Bleep calling Booster on Earth. Come in, please. Booster grabbed the microphone. Booster here, receiving you loud and clear. Where are you? Over. I am aboard the very latest Myron spacecraft, a space catamaran. She is specially designed to carry small loads of freight between the twin hulls. We are on course for landing on Earth. I bring visitors to meet you. They are my young cousins, Blink and Twink. They are looking forward to meeting an Earth boy. Can you guide us in? Over. Landing beam ready. Roger and out, answered Booster, and he hurried out into the garden with his powerful torch. Quickly, he switched it on, sending a beam of light probing the night sky. Now he could hear the throb of retro rockets quite clearly, and at last his torch picked out the silhouette of the space cat. It was like no spacecraft booster had ever seen before, with its two distinctive hulls, each with its own cabin, and joined together by an overhead freight cabin. Controlling the space cat from one cabin, Bleep made a perfect landing, right in the middle of the lawn. Greetings from Myron, called Bleep. And as he climbed out, Booster came running towards him. Please meet my cousins. This is Twink. Hello. Hello, Twink, said Booster, shaking hands. And this is Blink. Hello. Hello, Blink. What is Earth food like? I am hungry. Come in and try it. I've got some sausage rolls in my workshop. As the cousins rushed into the shed, Blink spotted the model space freighter. Why, it is a Myron spaceship, he cried. Does it fly? And he threw the model into the air before Booster could stop him. All Booster's patient work lay on the floor. There was a dreadful silence. Until Twink said, That was a terrible thing to do, Blink. I am very sorry. I did not know it would not fly. You two are always up to some mischief. Never mind, said Booster. Although really, he minded very much. I know. How about a trip in our space cat to make up for it? Said Bleep. Yes, let us take Booster back to Myron with us, cried Twink. And give him a good Myron meal, cried Blink. And as Booster reached for his space suit and boots, he began to feel better already. Bleep handed him his helmet. You will like the space cat. They went out into the garden and hurried towards the space cat that stood gleaming in the starlight. There was a feeling of adventure in the air, and Booster felt very excited as they climbed aboard. Bleep and Booster in one cabin, and Twink and Blink in the other. All set! Called Bleep over the intercom, and his fingers reached for the starter control. Stand by for blast off! As the space cat rose into the sky, the houses dropped away below them, the lights in their windows dwindling to pinpoints. A final boost, and they reached escape velocity, heading into the limitless regions of outer space. As the jets cut out, they became free from the pull of Earth's gravity. Booster was thoroughly enjoying himself, when suddenly everything went dark. into a meteor shower. Any minute, the hulls may be punctured by a flying particle. Just then, the light returned. We're through, cried Booster. The bleep still struggled with the controls. They are not working. Look over there. 
A planet dead ahead. Booster, we are on a collision course. 